Welcome back to In The Midst. Today we're gonna to change gears a little bit and I want to bring a thought to you about the table. What table are you focused on? What table are you concerned about? What table are you eating at? So I see often, um, especially all over social media, you know, a reminder for the family to get back to the dinner table. Love it support it a hundred percent it's great um i'm not saying not to do that i'm not trying to say give up the table give up game night give up family day nothing like that but i want to i want to help you to not get focused on just the dinner table god wants us to come to his table and sometimes we get too focused on the dinner table and that becomes our place of worship we worship the dinner table. We worship being together. We worship having everyone at the table every day. And we don't look beyond that to God's table. So, um, let's take a look at God's Word. Um, let's see. Like I said, I'm not trying to, you know, do away with the dinner table. As parents, we have a big, eternal responsibility to teach and train our children. We're to teach and train them up in the ways of the Lord and the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We are to lead by example, to live by example. You know, we can't um, tell our kids, you know, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. And they see the exact opposite of our lives. They're not gonna listen much to those words that we say usually. You've heard the phrase, more is caught than taught. And that's very, very true of our kids. And we're the same way um, when it comes to other people, the pastor, friends, our boss, anything like that. We quickly go, but you just did that or said that or you didn't. And we're like, hmm, okay, that's weird. Um, and that's fine. I get that. But part of being that example to your children is being able to show healthy boundaries, healthy habits with our food, our play, our rest, our work, our technology, all those things, what we allow in our homes, what movies we watch, what um, music we listen to, where we spend our time, where we spend our money, are we taking care of our bodies, are we not? There's lots and lots and lots of things coming here. Um, as a parent, it's your job to be involved, to know if they're struggling at school, are they, you know, Interacting with someone on social media through text, whatever that they shouldn't, that's not a good example, that is maybe bullying them or picking on them, bringing in foul language that you don't want them to hear and say. All those are concerns. And if we're not involved, we're not gonna catch it. We're not gonna know that that problem is sitting there. It's too easy for us to say, I don't understand technology. There's a new app that comes out every day and I can't keep up and I get it, it's true. But just remember that just because it's there doesn't mean you have to allow your child to participate. My 13 year old does not have a cell phone. Don't expect that to change anytime soon. Um, there's just no reason for it. He is allowed to watch like YouTube on the TV in the living room with the volume up, you know, adult supervision, nothing's done in secrecy. He has a tablet, but it's like a, it's not even top of the line. It's not new. It's some Windows, Android, something or other. Um, and he has the parental controls on my phone where I see everything. I have to approve new apps, you know, things like that. So be involved, whatever it takes, be involved. I spent five and a half months working at a girl's home. Um, they were teenage girls, troubled girls that were here and it's incredible. It's heartbreaking actually, but it was incredible. The things about technology that they taught me get dressed for practice for your game. Um, but they taught me was even possible um, about with technology in their classes. So some of them, it was, you know, COVID and stuff, online classes. Um, a couple of them had come from like California. So that was really big there to do that. And there were group chats set up between the kids in class that they're sharing answers. They're not doing the work. The work's right because someone else did it. But as long as the work is done and their grades are decent, it's all their parents cared about. They never asked questions. They never checked their phones. There's websites you put stuff in and it practically does it for you. So all they had to do was copy and paste, copy and paste. Um, and the teacher didn't know any different because 
they're not in class. The parents didn't know any different because we're not getting a notice saying the work's not done, you're passing. What more do you want from us? And the girls just ran with it and took advantage of it as any teenager would. I mean, I'm not just blaming the girls. Any Anybody would have done that. I did that um, in person, not with technology, but it's there. And if we're not aware of it, we're not gonna know that. So just be involved. We have to be involved with our kids' lives. This involves so much more than sitting at the dinner table, having a meal together without with or without electronics, whatever your rule is, and saying, how was your day? They're only gonna say what they want you to know. Some kids are very transparent. Some kids are just naturally not. I was the kid that was just naturally not. Nothing bad was going on, nothing great was going on. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot to talk about and I was like, it's good, fine. Whatever, it's cool, like same thing every day. Um, problems with my friends, most of the time I didn't really share. Um, I don't know, I was just a quiet kid. I don't, I don't think that I really felt that that relationship wasn't there where I couldn't share those things. I just did it. I'm a naturally kind of suffer in silence kind of type. And some of your kids are the same way and you literally have to pull things out of them. But sometimes it's too hard. And we go, eh, not today. You just must not want to talk about it, whatever. And we never come back to it. We are only concerned about being present around the table for one meal more than we are about being involved in every aspect, every part of their life. It's time we stop focusing on being around the dinner table and get them around God's table. You know, in church we sing the song, you know, the master calleth, come and dine. In Psalm 23, the Bible says um, in verses 5 and 6, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In God's house is a table. In God's house is a blessing. There's fullness. There's mercy and um, goodness. This is a praise. It is. It's, it's a a wonderful place to be in the presence of the Lord and it's a promise how do we obtain that promise we have to go back to Psalm 23 verse 1 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want it means I'm not gonna lack the Lord is my shepherd if the Lord is not your shepherd you're not gonna be at his table and if he is your shepherd if you are safe but you're not in church you're not doing devotions with your kids you're not teaching them scripture you don't have them around godly influences when are they going to hear the gospel? How are they going to know to come to the throne of God when they need help? The Bible says that we can come boldly into the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in time of need. God is inviting us to his throne room, to his very presence. The creator of the universe wants you and I, our kids, our troubled teenagers that don't ever talk, wants them to know how to come to him on their own whenever they need not just at church on sunday morning when pastor gives the altar call whenever they need on monday at school when they're struggling he wants them to know how and that they have the ability to just pause right in their seat in the middle of class or go to the restroom or whatever it takes and just have a moment of prayer with him and just lord help me i need you today but if we're not modeling that, we're not teaching that, the only thing we're concerned about is having dinner at the dinner table. We're not pointing them to the feast of God at his table. Where are they going to get it? They're not going to get it from the world. They're not going to get it from lost friends. They're not going to get it from TV. They're not going to get it from secular books and movies and music. Where are they going to get it from? It's up to you and I as parents to go to the table ourselves so we are fed. So we can bring our kids, so we can feed them the nourishment of the Word of God. If He is not your shepherd, you will not have access to His table. Christ must be a part of our lives every day. He's not a only on Sunday kind of God. He's not a far off God. It's our choice. And how we treat God, what we do with God, what we do with sin, is how our children will view God. That's how they will view sin. So, it's up to you, you know, what, um, 
what are you gonna do for your kids? Are we gonna only focus on the dinner table? Or are we going to bring them to the table of God that has eternal reward, eternal nourishment? We must stop worshiping the dining room table and begin worshiping around his table. Bring your children to Jesus. Stay in the word, stay close to the shepherd, and let him lead you in paths of righteousness.